until I'm gone. So it meaning on do whatever I want to do that makes me feel happy and not worry about what anybody else thinks that I'm going to do with my life. So I, I just do whatever I want to do so I can be happy in this world to pass it on to my next to show them what you need to do in life in order to be successful and not follow a path that you don't want to go the wrong way. So would you say that every human being should live that way? Not, not in my shoe. No, everybody got their own way on living and they own thought on how they going to get through the day, the month, the year. So the that's just how I wake up. So the proposition wake up, live to make yourself happy is not an ought claim. No one ought to do that. Someone can wake up and live unhappily if they choose to. It's up to them, right? That's literally up to whoever wants to. Yeah. So you're advocating for people to do whatever they want, right? Basically, you live your life however you want. Right. So if someone decides that they want to live their life, murder people, and keep their skeletons in their closet, would you say that that person is doing something right or wrong? That person is doing something wrong. But he's living the way he wants to live. But that's 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 the way that he wants to live, yeah. But that's just my thoughts on a person that is living that way. Because I'm not going to sit there and do that. But that's just my thoughts on living a wrong way. You're not going to want to have your kids growing up doing that type of things. Your kids, not his kids, right? In general. So you're advocating for subjectivism. Oh my God, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what it is. I, I subjectivism, the belief that all of us should live the way we want to live. Yeah, it and is. But I'm just saying, it's a, it, it's with the caveat. That's, that's bad. The with, the caveat said, with the caveat, with the caveat. Here's the caveat: make sure you do what makes you happy. <laughs> that, that, bro. <laughs> That goes into morality, because if we live to make ourselves happy, then that means it's right to make ourselves happy. And if someone's murdering people to make themselves happy, there's no argument against them, which would put us in a box where we can't defend our position, which means that that philosophical position has to be thrown out. What do you think? Um, <laughs> nah. <laughs> I, I, I like you, man. I like you. you. Got a good sense of humor. Well, I'm I'm just, I'm just forcing you to think consistently and logically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Regarding to logical implication, if I say everyone, we should all live to make ourselves happy. The logical implication is whatever they do to make themselves happy, even if it's harming me. The moment I say, hey, don't do that. I'm contradicting my proposition when I said, do what makes you happy. I see where you're going. Yeah. So there's no consistency. And if, there was, if there's no consistency, then it can't be true. And if it's not true, then you got to reject it. We got to believe what's true, man. You see what I'm saying? So what's your, what's <laughs> like, let, let me ask you now. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> the same question you asked me. I want to hear what you got to say. Okay. The right answer is. Since it's reasonable to believe that God exists and God created all of us, then that would logically imply that the reason we are here is to do what God says we're supposed to do. And by doing what God says we're supposed to do, we will find ultimate joy, peace, and happiness in this world. And if we don't do what he says we're supposed to do, we are going against our purpose. So the reason why human beings exist is to do what their creator wants them to do. What does God says we should do? Love your neighbor as yourself and love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's the best way to go. Amen, brother. There you go, bro. There you go. Amen. I'm glad I could I'm teach you gonna... something, man. I'm glad I could teach you something. Yes, Have a sir. good night. Yes, sir. <laughs> you too. That was a good interview. That was a good interview. We can... Cut this off right here. Cut this off right here. And see if we can get some more good content on this thing tonight. Not sure how things are going to work out. But uh, let's see what happens. Meaning of life.
Mm, life. Why are we here? The meaning of life. Ooh. Yeah, go ahead. Give me your answer. Because we were chosen. Chosen by who? God. But you say we were that, down here for a reason. You say that God placed us on earth to do what he wants us to do? Yes, I'm saying God placed us on earth to give us a shot at joy, happiness, and to also give us the chance to someday see him again by following in his footsteps. Okay, so you would agree with me that the ultimate purpose of humanity is to follow the commands of God and follow what he says we're supposed to do. I say yes, but I also say you don't want to forget the part where joy comes in as if like God wants you to be happy, but he wants you to do the right thing. Right. I mean, if you take a fish out of water, would you think the fish will be happy? No. Put the fish in the water, the fish will be happy. So if we do what God says we're supposed to do, God... Well, we are doing what we were created to do. We would say a fish was created to swim. We were created to serve God and love God. That's where we find ultimate joy. So you'd say that the purpose for which we are here is to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and love our neighbor as ourselves. That's what the Bible says. Right. Okay, that's the right answer. And you'll find that anybody who gives a different answer, they find themselves in inconsistencies and illogical blunders. Confusion. Yeah. You got the right answer, man. God bless you, bro. Have a good night. You too. What do you think the meaning of life is? See, it's not a hard question. You just got to tell them what you think. Uh, uh, shit. Uh, are you straight me doing this shit? No, 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 because you got to, like, get good content to post on YouTube. If you stream stupid stuff, nobody will subscribe to your channel. So yeah. <laughs> it, it depends on how this interaction goes. I don't know. You got to give an answer. I'll say. <laughs> we lost one. We lost one. Let's see. Uh, well. We lost one, guys. We lost one. We lost one. Let's see if we get a good one in the next one. What do you think the meaning of life is? Uh, I have no idea. No idea at all? Would you say that people exist so that they can make themselves happy? Okay, he's gone. <laughs> What's going on tonight? Nobody wants to answer the question. Oh, is it that uh, hard? Hey, can you answer the question of the night? Yeah. What is the meaning of life? Damn. Don't be like everybody else and skip because you don't know the answer. Come on, tell me. What's the meaning of life? Um, What's well, going on? Of my Kind of view. Go ahead. I really, I really think it's to live and try to like see other people that you meet. Like, hold on, I said it so wrong. Like, meet other people that you don't know and just live your life. Live and meet other people that you don't know and live. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Would you say that those who can't meet other people have no purpose? <clears throat> Am I making you think? Yeah. And I don't even know what to say now. <laughs> All right, let me let me give you an answer and tell me if you agree with this. It's reasonable to believe that God exists. Since God exists, God is the one who created all of us. And if God created all of us, then it would be reasonable to think that he is the one to determine how we should live. And if he tells us to love our neighbor as ourselves and love him with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength, then that's the purpose for human existence. Does that sound logical to you? Yes. 
So you would say now, if you ever get the question again, the purpose of life is to live according to what your creator says you should do. Mm -hmm. There we go. I'm glad I could teach you something tonight, man. Oh, sorry, girl. Have a good night now, all right? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> what the is the what is the meaning of life? The meaning of life? Yeah. Why are we here? To serve a greater God. That is the right answer. That is the right answer. But let me see if your brother or your friend says the same friend. thing. What what do you think? Is the meaning of to life? Serve. To serve the man of power. Okay, that's the right answer, guys. I got nothing to say. I got nothing to say. Everybody else, when they say something different, they find themselves committing logical blunders, fallacies, and put themselves in inconsistencies. But you guys got got the answer right, so we don't got to go further. I just want to say God bless you too and have a good wait, night. Wait, man. wait, wait. Can you go further? I want to learn. Okay, okay, sure. Let me ask you this question. Since God created all of us, would you agree that God knows the future? Yeah. What would you say if someone asked you, since God knows the future, how is it that we have free will to choose to do otherwise than what God knows? He gave us free will, but gave us choices. He gave us the guide of Jesus's life and how he wanted Jesus to live in the form of the Bible, which is him. All right. Let, all right. And let me ask you this on that. And we are in agreement on all of this, okay? I just want to challenge you so that if you don't know the answer, I can give you the answer. And the challenge is this. If God knows that tomorrow you will eat pizza, but you are able to do otherwise than what God knows you will do, then God simply, simply has a guess as to what you are going to do. He doesn't know that you will do that particular thing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why there is a perspective within Christianity called open theism. They say God does not know the future. He learns the future the same way you and I do. And this is the reason. If free will is true, that you can actually choose to do otherwise than what you will choose to do, then God only has guesses as to what you will do. He has no certainty. That's why there are some Christians who say there is no such thing as free will. Because if God knows that you will eat pizza tomorrow, there is nothing that will stop you from eating pizza tomorrow. Not even you. You get it? Yeah. Yeah. So if someone says to you, how is it that we have free will but God knows the future? You say, there is no free will because God knows exactly what's going to take place. And there is nothing that can invalidate God's knowledge. Which is why, here we go, here's the big question now. If that's true, then how do we explain Adam and Eve and sin coming into the world? It goes into something else. You, you, you got a I have question. a question. Go ahead. Okay, so, like, people say to me, they're like, if God gives you a choice, I mean, if God knows what's going to happen, then, like, if he's so loving, why would he, like, make you go to hell? Okay, let's Since, get into like, that. He... Let's get into that. It starts with Adam and Eve. Why would God allow sin and evil to come into the world if God knew that that was going to take place? And the answer is, the only logical answer is, God wanted it to come into the world. Now let me tell you why. When you read through the Bible, such as the story of Joseph and others, when Joseph's brothers were standing in front of him, Joseph said to his brothers, you meant evil against me, but God meant the evil for good. So God is using sin and evil for good to show his creation that he has power over evil, to show his creation that he's righteous, that he is holy, and that he's good, all of which could not be shown if evil and sin did not exist. Now let's get to your question. Why do people go to hell if God loves everyone? The answer to the question is people break God's law and the only way that God can show himself to be a just God is by inflicting justice. If God does not inflict justice, 
then none of us can say as Christians that we believe in a just God and we believe in justice because not even our God believes in justice. So he sends people to hell because they break his law, his moral law, which says don't steal, don't murder, don't commit adultery, don't fornicate, and you know the rest and stuff like that. So that's the answer. Does it make sense? Um, yeah, I have another question though. Go ahead. Like, if God knows what you're gonna do, someone someone asked me this. This isn't my question, but like, I don't know the answer. So they said, if God knows what you're gonna do, then why does He let you sin? Like, so that you're gonna like, wait. If He knows you're gonna sin and you're, He knows you're not gonna go to heaven, but He loves you. Why does he let you do all of those things? If God knows you're going to sin, why does he let you sin? Is that the question? Pretty much. Okay. Okay. So what takes place in time is rooted and grounded in the action of God. Logically prior to God creating the universe and the world and you and me and all three of us, he considered in his mind how he's going to make us, where he's going to make us, and when he's going to make us. We're living in the year 2024 right now. We could have been living in the year 1968 if God chose that that was the case. Or the year 3000 if that was the case that God chose. So when God considers creating you, he also considered the way he will make you, where he'll make you, and how he'll make you, and when. And that includes your actions, your choices, and your thoughts. All of those things that come into one, which is why David can say in Psalm 139, verse 16, that you have formed all of my days for me. And why Job could say that God performs all that has been appointed for me. So all of our days have been planned out by God, including the bad things that we do. And this is the reason why we have scriptures such as Romans 8, 28. God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and are called according to his purpose. And why the Bible says we have no basis for worrying about tomorrow. Because God is in control of all that takes place. The question then becomes, as you asked, why would God allow someone to sin if he knows they will sin. Because again, God uses sin for good. God uses evil for good. An example would be, let's say a drunk driver accidentally, well, purposely, because he's drunk, he, he's one who drank, and he ran over a child. And as a result, he goes to prison for 10 years. And when he comes out of prison, he starts a rehabilitation center. And as a result of his action, hundreds of people no longer stay alcoholics. Someone would say the evil act of him killing that little girl by crashing into her with his truck was bad. But look at the end result. This man is now out of prison who started a rehabilitation center and now hundreds of people won't be alcoholics and hence bring more death and despair to the world. So God uses things like that for good because it was his plan from before the foundation of the world. So that's why he he allowed or permitted or decreed that sin would take place. And the, the second question was, why would God send someone to hell that he loves? That he loves. Now, the answer for this question is a very, very tough answer because not a lot of people are going to like the answer when you give it to them. The Bible actually teaches in Psalm chapter 5, verse 5, that there is an anger that God has for those who continue in sin and continue in rebellion. And this anger goes to the point of being abhorrence, the disgust and hatred towards something. And when you look at the seven deadly sins, the last two on the list are people, someone who lies continuously and someone who continues to stir up strife among men and women. And a lot of people don't want to hear that because we've all been taught that God is love and God can't hate and God can't hate anything. But the point of the matter is God hates the one who continues in sin and rebellion toward him. And the people who are in hell are filled with people who hate God 
and who God also does not have a favorable feeling toward. Because think about it this way. If God loves everyone equally, then God is the biggest failure in the universe because he tried to save everyone equally and he failed and now they are in hell. And when you go to heaven and you meet God, you're going to see him crying. You're going to say, God, why are you crying? And then he says, man, I tried my best to save John Doe and he went to hell and I was burning for all eternity and I couldn't do anything about it and I'm sad. But that's not the God of Scripture. The God of Scripture is the one who decreed and ordains that all things come to pass, and he glorifies himself in the just condemnation of the wicked and the righteous salvation of those he has chosen for the foundation of the Lord to be saved by him. I hope all this is making sense, but these are all things you can look into. And you can go on my YouTube channel and look at more of these things so that you can learn more. Dreams. But does it make sense? Yeah. I have another question, though. Sure. Wow. That wasn't a question. That was a skip. <laughs> wow. They did me wrong, man. They did me. They did me wrong. But look, guys. These are the answers to all of those questions. And I'm not saying these are a, th th these are possible answers. I'm telling you, these are the answers. Because any other answer that you give that is not the biblical answer, you are going to find yourself in the category of inconsistency. You're going to also find yourself in the category of being illogical. And if you are illogical, then you're not following what the Bible teaches because the Bible is logical. The Bible is consistent. The Bible is perfect in all of its doctrines, in all of its major areas and major details. Because the Bible is not accurate in all of the minor details, but it is accurate in all of the major details because of the process it went through, which is a long line of copying 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 but never losing its original wording because when you copy something millions of times with different people millions of different people what you'll always find is tenacity in the text and that is what was found in the in the textual tradition that all of the copies have errors but they don't all have the same errors which means that Whenever a reading shows up in the textual tradition, that reading stays. And if that's the case, well, rather, since that's the case, then the original reading and the original writings of the apostles are still there. Just a little bit of hard work, and you can find the original writings, the original words of the apostles. And that's what we have in a textual tradition. But we, have, we also have mistakes in all of the minor details. And... Those minor details do not affect any major doctrine. And as a result, in the major details, the doctrines of God and all of the Christian doctrines throughout the centuries remain. And those doctrines are consistent. Those doctrines are perfect. And when you follow them, as you see, as you've seen that I have been continually doing on these videos that I've been making, when you follow the consistent line throughout Scripture, you will find that you can answer all of these tough questions and have consistent answers for these tough questions. But when you don't follow the Word of God, you will always have inconsistent answers and a lot of problems. And, you know, questions like, why would God, why does sin and evil exist if God is all loving and all good? The only consistent answer is to say that God is not only all loving and all good, but God is also all just. And he wants for all of creation to know him perfectly. The wicked know him perfectly and the good to know him perfectly. But the good are those who God makes good through the imputation of the righteousness of Jesus Christ. 
And because God wants us to know him perfectly, he decreed that sin would exist. Because we would not know of God's holiness, righteousness, goodness, justice, and all of these amazing attributes that God has, unless sin existed, or unless sin exists. And God cannot use evil for good unless evil exists. God cannot use sin for good unless sin exists. That's the only consistent answer and the right answer, which means that all other answers are inconsistent and all other answers are wrong. But these young men, it seems as though they have been deceived by the popular answer to these questions, that we have free will and that is somehow a solution to the problem that they, the free willers, have created. Oh boy. Anyways, let's see who else we have to interact with on this platform. What do you think the meaning of life is? Fuck bitches, get money. Wow, that's a good answer. <laughs> Very interesting. I never heard that one before. Can I that's probe it a little bit? Wait, is that what go you on, is on. that what you say too? Have sex with women and make money? Nah, yes. I'm a Muslim. I'm Muslim. Okay, so you say have sex with women and make money. That's the purpose of life, right? Yes. So that means, by logical implication, those who can't have sex and those who can't make money don't have a purpose. Basically, yeah. Okay. So would you advocate for the wiping out of people who are taking up space in the world because they are here without a purpose. Definitely. I like the consistency. Final answer. Final question, rather. Would you advocate for the killing of babies since babies can't have sex and can't make money? No. So, would you say that you're being inconsistent in your answer? Yes. And would you say that inconsistency is a sign of something that's not true and you should reject it? No. Marcus Rashford is inconsistent. Doesn't mean United are going to terminate his contract. Oh, that's inconsistency in performance. We're talking about inconsistency in logical premises and truth. If something is false, logically, don't you think you should reject it? Uh, what, I, what I'm basically saying is, do you think you should destroy all lies and throw them out, burn them in the trash or something? Lies. Yes. Yeah. So if something is inconsistent, it's a lie. And if it's a lie, it should be rejected. Mm. Mm. If you say so. <laughs> I'm sure you agree because you have a girlfriend who lies to you every day. You're going to say, stop lying to me, you probably call it a b-word i don't know <laughs> nah yeah. i've got respect for women come on our brother well earlier you said earlier you said fbs i can't even say oh. it because <laughs> fbs you know, inconsistent <laughs> I mean, i'm just pointing out the inconsistencies bro yeah so uh, i don't think that our purpose is to have sex with women and make money i think and i think that my muslim friend here will agree i think mm -hmm. that we are all here to live in accordance with what God sets out for us to live by. Amen. There you go. There you go. Are you a Christian? That's... Yeah, I'm Christian. And I got a question for your Muslim friend. Muslim. Oh, wow. He's got a question. Jannah. Jannah is heaven, right? Yeah. I don't know what it means. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that, that's the, like, the Arabic word for heaven. What I want to oh, yeah, ask yeah. is... What? Is it true that when you go to heaven or Jannah, <clears throat> you get a hundred virgins? What does that mean? Like when you go to heaven and Muslim like religion, you get a hundred virgins. He's asking you, is that true? I don't know what I mean to. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Okay, so I, I guess I guess you're a Muslim who doesn't really study yeah, into it that not much. Practicing. Not practicing. Oh, you're not a practicing Muslim. No, he just says it. He just says it. Oh, bro, we, we, we got those in our camp, too, in Christianity. We got those, too. Those who say they're Christians and they don't really follow it. Yeah. Can I come to Christianity? Yes, you can. All, all you got to do is repent of your sins, trust in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, and you'll be can saved. Can we do a prayer, then? Can we do a prayer? Yeah, of course we can. 
God, I call upon you to forgive these young men of all their sins, trespasses, and transgressions. I ask that you will draw them into your family, make them believers and worshipers of you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you amen. for that, brother. I appreciate Isaac. that. May God bless you and your family. And Do you have kids or something? Yes, I do. Thank you so much for the oh, yeah. well wishes, my brother. God bless you God all. Bless you. And I, I hope that Thank I was so able much. to teach you something today, all right? Thank you, brother. I appreciate that prayer. Thank you, brother. God bless you. Have, have a good night. Same to you, man. The question is, what do you think the meaning of life is? The meaning of life. Yeah, why are we here? Um, why, why are we here? <laughs> to make babies. <laughs> okay, that's one. What would you say, um, would you say um, the second person? The second person. Same shit, same shit. Okay, do you mind if I probe your answer a little bit? Probe? Yeah, like challenge it. You you want to stick a probe in us? No, no, no. It's just a word we use to challenge. Is you streaming right now? No, I'm not streaming. No, no. You have to have good content to, to put up on YouTube and stuff. If you stream, then whatever comes up on your stream has to be posted. And we I don't like that stuff. <laughs> Even the foolishness. You may, you may probe my way. So, to probe your answer, if someone can't have babies, does that logically imply that they have no purpose? Yeah. Yes. Yes? <laughs> so, would, if something is in your house and it has no purpose, do you get rid of it? Yes. yes. So, would that logically imply that we should get rid of every human being who can't have babies? Mm-hmm. Yes. So, you advocate for eugenics you kill all the people who can't have babies yes. mm -hmm. final question on that final question would that logically imply that we should kill babies because babies can't have babies no why the inconsistency no. because babies wait ba wait <laughs> Hold on. they can't have babies so no, they have give no me purpose. one moment. Wait, wait, can you say that question again? So he said if babies can't have babies. If the purpose of life, if the purpose of life is to have babies and babies can't have babies, should we kill babies? No, because you have to wait for them to grow up so they can have babies. So you only kill people who can't, but you leave people alive who have the possibility of having babies. Yes. Yeah, and then if they don't have the possibility of having babies, you you kill them. You give them a razor and they slit their wrists. Slit their wrists and kill them, take them out. Mm hmm Okay, Wait, so what age, what age do you think human beings have the capacity to have babies? Six. At, at 16. <laughs> so someone at age Actually, 16. 13, 14. 13, 14. Okay, so someone at age 13, 14 decides, I don't want to reproduce. Should we kill them? Yeah. So you would advocate for people not having the right to choose how they want to I'll live their life. I'll, I'll advocate sticking a perm up your butt. Where? Well, I hope that I'm teaching you all something very important, and that is you force people to think logically and you always show them the logical implications of their answer always uh are you guys ready for the question of the night yes what do you think the meaning of life is what do i think the mean meaning of life yeah why are human beings on the planet uh, uh well god put it for what would you say that reason is? The reason is live good life and try to learn some new things in life. You know? Like, explore the world, explore where you want to go. So would you agree with me that our purpose is to live in accordance with what God says in his word, the Bible? Yeah. Okay, that's the right answer. What do you think, man? What was the question? What was the question? What's the purpose of life? 
But before you, before you answer it, the person who came before you said the purpose of life is to have babies. And then I forced them to think logically. And then I asked this question. If people can't have babies, do they have no purpose? And then they said, well, I'm going to think about it. And then I asked them, if furniture is in your house without a purpose, would you get rid of it? They said, yes. Then I asked them, if someone is in this world without a purpose, do we get rid of them? They said, yes. I'm like, okay, so you advocate for killing people who can't have babies? It's yes. <laughs> I'm like, whoa. Because I forced them to think in accordance with the logical implication. He gave the right answer, and it is that we live according to what God says, because he created us, and he has the right to tell us how to live. But what do you think the answer is, man? What's the purpose of life? Yeah. <clears throat> man. <laughs> To have fun to have fun all right let's let, let let's take yeah. that to its logical conclusion what if someone finds fun in shooting dogs should they continue no so you would say that the answer you gave because you can't be consistent with your answer you have to throw it out yeah but why you got me you got me feeling dumb hold on Wait, 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 let me start, let me start, let me start, let me start, let me start. Okay, give a different answer. What is the purpose of life? Oh, different answer? <clears throat> well, if you, if you give the same answer, I could give you a different, I could give you a different scenario. If someone thinks, like Jeffrey Dahmer did, the guy who brought men home, killed them, skinned them, skinned them, and kept their skulls in his closet. I would say that was reprehensible and wrong, but he actually found that fun. If someone says, man, yo, the reason we're here is to have fun. Then if I think that murdering people, taking them home and skinning them is fun, then there is no argument against what I'm doing because I'm doing what makes me happy and what's fun. But you would disagree with that. And if you do, you're being inconsistent with your answer. And inconsistency is a sign of a lie, and we shouldn't believe lies. We should throw them out. Like, forget about them. Were you a Christian? Yeah, I am a Christian. I'm a Christian philosopher, so I think philosophically about these things. And because Christianity is consistent in all areas, scientifically, philosophy, philosophically, and socially, you'll find that if you give Christian answers, you will always be consistent. But if you don't give Christian answers, then <laughs> we're going to have this, <laughs> problems like this. Mm. Yeah. Well, as you were talking about the Jeffrey Dahmer situation. Yeah, Jeffrey Dahmer, like he, what he was doing? He was a cannibal. Like, he, he used to eat people after he killed them and keep them keep their dead bodies yeah. in his home. Don't you, don't you feel kind of bad for him? Jeffrey Dahmer? Yeah, yeah. You feel kind of bad for him a little bit. I feel bad for how he turned out because he said in an interview that he believes wholeheartedly in the doctrine of evolution that we all evolved from bacteria then to a sea creature, then to a land creature, then to a monkey, and then eventually to human beings, which means that we essentially have no value, no dignity, no worth. So just like stepping on a cockroach or stepping on bacteria as you walk and killing uh, bugs, that's the value we have. So we can basically do anything we want with a human being because they are nothing but bacteria. And... He found joy in killing bacteria or evolved bacteria. And if you really look into it, if that is actually what we are, evolved bacteria, then he's not wrong in what he did. Might makes right. If I'm superior to you and I want to take you home and break your bones, stab you, cut you up, if I do that to a rat, I'm not wrong. A rat is just a lesser evolved uh, life form. And if you've noticed, people test rats in labs and they do all manner of stuff to rats, but you don't find them in prison. And you don't see them going to get punished anywhere. That would logically imply I can do that to any of you, tie you up, cut you up, experiment on you, and I not be wrong if... Evolution is right. Je Jeffrey Dahmer is right. But he's not right. 
the Christian perspective, the Christian worldview is right. And that's what we should follow, which is what your friend said. So just don't give those mm. answers. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I don't even know. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I ain't gonna lie. Yeah, so that was a good one. That was a good one. The right answer for what the meaning of life is, is to do what your creator wants you to do. He created you with the purpose of serving him and worshiping him. That's why the belief in God is reasonable and right. Because he created you and he decides how you should live. And that's why we're here. That's the purpose of life. Every other answer you give, you'll be able to find a problem with. Trust me. Even there's one guy who said the purpose of life is to have sex with women and make money. I'm like, okay, what do we do with those who can't have sex and can't make money? <laughs> you kill them, get rid of them. And he said no to that, so that's inconsistency. You gotta reject it. So then, the, then you said, like, like. You then, gave him the right answer. Then, then you gave him the right answer. Yeah, everybody so far change their answer to mine because it's consistent mm. but and it's, like, it's but right like, it's like two plus two is four no matter what so like wait so philosophy is different from religion right there is something called the philosophy of religion but you can't have philosophy without having truth or a basis for truth and philosophy can't give you a basis for truth all it does is gives you what the universe gives it and you describe what the universe gives you and ask questions about the universe you can't get truth from asking questions you get truth from the answers from the questions and the answers to those questions are what you get from religion so if you do philosophy without religion you'll have questions but you won't have answers so philosophy and christianity are a perfect combination because you get all the answers of philosophy from christianity and any other answer you get will be inconsistent. Is that your religion? Yeah, because it's the right one. It's best you follow the right one, the right thing. Do the right thing. Yeah. Amen to that. There you go. It's reasonable. I I respect your opinion. Are you are you a Christian? Oh, uh, my parents grew up Catholic, and I I believe in that too. Okay, you're not far from the kingdom. Yeah. Just got to read the Bible and leave the Bible alone. And those things the Bible don't teach, such as purgatory, praying to Mary, and all the other stuff like penance and indulgences, that you'll be fine. I actually, like, started believing in God when I started, like, act, like reading, like, Bible verses and quotes because, like, some of them, like, they, like, they're actually, like, really, like, like the quotes and like the the verses like they hit hard yeah yeah that's what it does it's it's powerful man there yeah. you go well nice talking to you too man god bless yeah. you yeah. have a good night you now all right too. all right what do you think the meaning of life is i don't know you don't know okay I don't know for what would you say if you had to answer why are human beings here oh uh... <laughs> okay okay for, forget about human beings why are you here why are you alive because God God sent me here okay so would that logically imply that because God sent you here you should live according to how he wants you to live and that's your purpose yeah for okay sure. that's the right answer there you go that's the right answer thank you for giving me an answer of course yeah have a good night oh she skipped me we're not going to get anything from this one so we're going to move on what do you think the meaning of life is leslie um um i think the meaning of life is just having fun 
and believe in God. Okay. The meaning of life is to have fun. What about you? Think, do you think that that would logically imply that whatever makes you have fun is good and right? Yeah. If someone finds it fun to shoot dogs in the head, do you think they should keep doing it? Leslie left. That's what happens, guys, when you force people to go to their logical conclusion. Whatever they say, the logical implication of their answer. If they cannot agree with the logical implication of their answer, then that means they don't agree with their answer. That's the problem. Do you speak, young man? Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm asking philosophical questions to see who gets the right answer. Okay. Yeah. Would you like to participate? Okay. What do you think the meaning of life is? Um, death. So, do you think that we exist to die? I guess. Okay. Would that logically imply that we should all kill each other because we're here to die? I don't see why not. We're not really doing this world much good, you know? So, would you say that in this moment you're not living according to your purpose because you're not dead and the person behind you isn't dead either? How did you know that there's a person behind me? Oh, because you, you turned started. around just now. And if you um, agree, if you agree with me that we should all kill each other, why aren't you living up to your purpose and killing him in the bed right now? That's a good question. Yeah. Or it could be that you're being inconsistent with your answer. What do you think the meaning of life is, Buster? Well, the meaning of life is to do what your creator wants you to do because he created you and he has the right to tell you what to do. And that's God. So that's where we're here. To follow what he says in his word, the Bible. What did bro say to do? Well, he said that we should love our neighbor as ourselves and to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. What if God's not real, though? Well, if God is not real, then there is no basis for logic, no basis for truth, no basis for science, and no basis for universal moral ethics. And if that's the case, then there is no right and wrong. There is no truth, there is no scientific induction, and there is no basis for human value and dignity. And I'm sure you don't believe any of those things, so God exists, and you believe in him. Would you agree? No. Okay, let me ask you this. What is your standard for moral ethics, then, if you don't believe in God? I'm, I'm an atheist. I know, I know. That's what you said. If you don't believe in God... Why is rape and murder wrong in your worldview? Because law enforcement made it bad. I don't know, because it's just not good. It's not good. So legality determines morality in your worldview. So if the society says that rape and murder is right, then if you're, if you're consistent, then you would have to agree with them, right? I guess. Okay, but... let me ask you this. If the government says that everyone wearing a hoodie should die, would you agree with them? No. So that means you are being inconsistent with your answer. No, that's just like retarded, though. No, it's not. It's <laughs> I'm just showing you the logical implication of your answer. If the government says anything is right, you have to agree with them if you say that legality determines morality. Um, he got you there. Okay, Buster. Do you want to talk to this guy, bro? He's confusing. He's using some big words. It's not a big word. Legality is in reference to that which is legal. If it's legal then that I, I means it's it right. Means. If, okay, so legality determines morality is your argument. If that's mm. true, then if you're not consistent with your argument, then you have to throw it out because if you can't agree with this logical implication, then that means you don't really like the answer after all. 
Okay. Right. So you would agree with my answer then. Here? My answer is you do what God says because God is real. So you change your answer? No. I mean, that would be reasonable to change your answer because... Well, no, how are we just going to believe like some stories from like 3,000 years ago though? So are you saying that the length of time that something has been written determines if it's true or not? Not really, but like... But you, uh, you, you said that as if, because it's no, old, like, we should reject it. No, but like, um... I feel like Jesus was probably like a real person and shit, but like, I don't really believe that he was like the son of God or whatever, like... I don't know. Well, I would say that if the Bible shows that it's historically consistent, then what it says should be true, and it's true. And because we have all of the elements of historicity in the Bible. If you ever heard the word historicity before, there's a certain criteria that documents have to meet for it to be regarded as historical documents. They have to have those elements. The Bible has those elements, therefore it's historical. And if it's historical, what it says is true, and it says Jesus Christ is God. If you don't believe he's God, then you have to give an alternative. And if your alternative is not consistent, then you have to reject it and believe the Bible. Um, okay, buddy. Well, like, happy Easter or whatever. Same to you, man. It, it, right, seems, you believe, it seems you believe in God now. I love that I... I got you too. Good job, bro. Have a good night. <laughs> Yo, oh, guys, yes. it's, it's, it, it, it's not hard. You just got to think logically. Whatever someone says, show them their logical implication. If they don't like it, they have to reject their answer. If they don't, then they're being inconsistent and dishonest. Hey, guys. Period. Are you all ready for the question of the night? Mm-hmm. What is the meaning of life? The meaning of life is completing what God, what God and you believe that you're supposed to do in life. If you're supposed to do a specific thing, you, you're supposed to do that thing. You, you're supposed to make yourself feel happy in what you're doing in life. So you would say that the meaning of life is to do what makes you feel happy? Do what makes you feel happy to the, do what makes you, do what makes you feel happy and do, and do what makes you feel better in life. Okay. Can I show you the logical implication of that? Mm. The, that would logically imply that whatever I do to make me happy is right. Correct? Do what makes you happy to an extent. Okay. Do what to makes you happy to an extent. Would that me? Would that be? Do what makes you happy without harming others. Yeah. Okay. Is pain? It's down. I'm sorry. Would you say that pain is inflicting harm? What kind of pain? So it depends on what kind of pain it is. Okay. Let's say it's poking well, someone. Well, it doesn't really matter what type of pain, but like what. What specific type of pain are you speaking? Like, like a medical pain, medical physical, in, medical injection, physical pain. Me so physical. Physical pain, yes. This, physical pain, yes. Hurtful. Okay, so do what makes you happy without causing physical pain, which is harm. Physical, mental, and spiritual pain to others. Right. Okay. What if you, your behavior in making yourself happy makes someone else unhappy by seeing you be happy. Should you stop? I, I wouldn't say stop. I would say, in, I would say, I would personally, being myself, I would encourage others to find what makes them happy or encourage, or encourage and help them find what makes them happy so they can be all, so they can also be happy with me. So instead of, would you advocate for the utilitarian perspective, which says that the purpose of life is to make the greatest number of people happy in life? I wouldn't say that because 
making people happy sometimes and most in some situations won't make you happy and will just make you feel worse in a specific situation. But okay. it mostly depends on the situation that you're in as a person. What would you say to someone who finds happiness in murdering others? I would say, yeah, it's fucked up. If it makes you happy, I, I'm not saying murder. I would, I would say, try, try to find something that makes you happy, but also still, fuck, but off. Give up. There may. Okay, so there may be stuff that may make you happy that may inflict pain on others. Right. But but at the same time, inflicting pain on others. As it is bad, pe- people make mistakes, and I'm and I'm basically trying to say, people making mistakes is fucked up. I know we all make mistakes. It's right. fucked up. Right. We all feel like shit when we do it. Sometimes we don't. Sometimes we do. But when we do, we try whatever and we try and do whatever we can to fix said mistake if it's not already too late. Right. So, if so, since murdering makes you happy, you you automatically would be forced to by yourself if you have a conscience, or at least a good conscience, to change. For society, for yourself, to better the world. But do you see an inconsistency if you say that the purpose of life is to be happy and okay? He skipped. He skipped. If. He skipped. Uh, or she skipped. I don't even know if that was a girl or a man. I think it was a man. A young man. He skipped. Uh, sometimes, as I was saying, it is very easy for you to show logical inconsistencies in the arguments of these people. Very easy. And staying with the standard of God's word, you will never lose a debate. You will never lose a conversation because God's word is truth. And whatever goes against truth will always be wrong. This is it for the night. Just about an hour. Of interactions I hope you all enjoyed it there will be timestamps in this video so that you can see the various topics and the various answers that I got from this question and like share subscribe and stay consistent my friends God bless you all